Welcome to the State Archives of North Carolina online tutorial on Bagger, the file authentication tool. This is a three-part tutorial that will explain the basics about Bagger and file authentication, how to download and install Bagger, and how to create and validate a bag for transfer of electronic records to the State Archives of North Carolina. You are now watching Part 1, Bagger Basics and File Authentication. Bagger is a tool developed by the Library of Congress and their partners in the National Digital Information Infrastructure and Preservation Program, also called NDIP. You probably use several different devices to store data, including your local computer, servers, and external devices. Each time you copy a file from one of these storage devices onto another, you are physically recreating that file on the new device. How do you know if the new file you created is the exact same as the original? How would you be able to demonstrate this in court or during a public records request? Even if you do not move files, as your files sit in one place for a long time, they can change. These changes can be a result of several factors, and you may be called upon at some time in the future to demonstrate that your digital records have not been altered. Changes occur for four primary reasons. Technical errors when moving files. Bit rot, which simply means physical deterioration of the data. Remember, your digital files are also physical files. They are physically located on media that can quickly deteriorate in heat, high humidity, or with dust. Human error. You may have opened and edited the files without realizing. Purposeful tampering. The Bagger tool helps you verify your data when you transfer it across media and can also help you document that your files have not changed as they sit in storage over time. This tutorial will focus on using Bagger to transfer archival records to the State Archives of North Carolina. Bagger uses the Bagot specification developed by the Library of Congress to package your files for transfer. You don't need to know the technical details, though, to use Bagger. Let's say you have a folder of meeting minutes for 1989 and 1990. Your folder identifies its content and today's date. Within this folder, your files are packaged hierarchically into subfolders. You'd like to transfer these files to the State Archives. Bagger packages your files into what is called a bag. The bag contains a folder called Data, where your original files and folders reside. Four additional metadata files are created by Bagger. These list and fingerprint all of your original files. The name of your bag should be the original name of your data, with underscore bag added to the end. The first of your metadata files contains information about the size of your bag. It tells you the number of files you have, the date you bagged them, and their total size. The second metadata file identifies the bagot version used. The third file contains a manifest of all your original files. To the left of the manifest list is an alphanumeric fingerprint of each file. This long string of numbers and letters is called a checksum, or hash. Every checksum is unique, and each checksum fingerprints your file. If even just one letter in your document or one pixel in your image file is changed, the checksum for that file will change completely. Finally, the fourth file contains a list of the first three metadata files and the checksums of those files to demonstrate that the metadata has not been damaged or changed. Now your files are bagged and ready to be transferred to the State Archives of North Carolina. This concludes Part 1, Bagger Basics and File Authentication. Please continue to Part 2 to learn the process of downloading and installing Bagger.